Morning everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Got another morning video coming at you due to the simple fact that we have a potentially big day once again for severe weather. Last night was actually surprises after I went off air at about 10 o'clock, even though that was partially not of my own volition. We ended up getting a pretty strong tornado over here towards Oklahoma once again. And then of course this area is under the gun again today unfortunately currently at a five percent tornado threat over there from midland texas all the way up into wichita areas to the west of wichita kansas and even the two percent area has to be monitored over towards oklahoma city and norman in fact if i remember correctly last night over here towards oklahoma and texas we were like right on the edge between a five and a two so even if you're in that 2% area today, keep your eyes open. We have a damaging wind threat that's up to enhanced risk levels at a 30% over here, mainly comprised between areas east of Midland, Texas, through Abilene and Wichita Falls. And we also have a pretty significant hail threat stretching all the way through central Kansas, all the way back towards Fort Stockton in Texas and areas in between. So getting a quick nap analysis here from the H triple R one of my favorites to look at we already kind of talked about this in detail yesterday morning so we're going to kind of be brief on this one not much has really changed really getting a glancing blow from this trough we get a little bit of extra energy from this little short wave that's going to pop up becomes more prevalent in the mid levels of the atmosphere but this is going to be the catalyst behind our severe weather setup. I don't expect this one to be a long lasting event, but just like with yesterday, mother nature can be full of surprises. So the main thing we're gonna do now is take a close look at the time frame in which those short waves really amp up and it looks like it will be right at sunset. So depending on the timing that the low level jet increases along with this short wave, we could have a few tornadoes with this. I do think that this is gonna mainly remain a linear event though, but do have to be on the lookout for some of these discrete cells, just like last night, really. So looking at our low level jet, this is what we have going on right now. And as we go later into the day, I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday, but just like I talked about that north to south motion is typically what, or south to north motion, excuse me, is typically what we look for when we're looking for a severe weather event, especially with tornadoes. And you can see that pretty prevalent here across Western Oklahoma once again. So with that amplified shortwave being a point of lift, and then over here where we have this pocket of nearly 50 knots low level jet, Somewhere out ahead of that is probably going to be the point of interest for a couple of supercells, maybe a few tornadoes here. So we're going to just keep the ball rolling here. We talked about our dew points here. Not much has really changed with that very ripe environment once again. And it's going to continue to be that way throughout the entire evening and into the overnight here. So these storms will have the fuel that would, they would need to get going here. We got, of course, as we know, it's getting closer to summertime, so it's getting nice and warm over here. We're getting surface temperatures in the 80s, some places even getting to 90. So we're already meeting our requirements there. So we'll go ahead and shift over to some of our severe parameters. Here we are taking a look at our instability. Of course, as we head into the evening tonight, we're expecting a lot of energy for these thunderstorms to feed off of here. 3,000 plus joules per kilogram on Cape. When these short waves get going, will be just after sunset. So we'll see a slight drop off. Otherwise, we could have even been seeing some 4,000s as you could see here. But the initiation time matters here. Due to the higher amounts of Cape, there is a chance that we could have an earlier start time, but we'll have to see how things progress throughout the day. It does seem like there is a bit of a cap that's trying to build in over towards this region. And I'll go ahead and show that too really quickly. And once these numbers kind of lighten up, that kind of gives me that indicator that the cap is starting to break here. And it does look like there is a chance we could get storms to fire a little earlier, maybe around three or four, maybe, maybe even as early as three or 4 p.m. Central time. Like I said, it's kind of up in the air. I do think with those short waves, 
considering this is a glancing blow from the trough, it's going to take a little longer for this to get going. But once it does, we're off to the races here, so to speak. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our significant tornado parameter here to go along with that. And then, of course, we're going to show what the radar looks could look like over the course of the next few hours here. So as we get later into the evening, that's when those numbers really start to ramp up here. Kansas actually looks like it has the highest numbers so far. I don't know if the storms will make it that far north, though. But if we were to look at the low level shear here. Oh my goodness that zero to three loop is looking pretty gnarly the way the the way the setup looks here this definitely has that look of close to being a high precipitation cell maybe some rain wrap tornadoes along with this but all hazards are also possible with this as well we have the threat for significant hail we also have the threat for some damaging winds to go along with that so pretty good numbers i would say here in this case oklahoma doesn't look like it picks up as much as I thought it would on the significant tornado parameter here. We do get some values, but not quite as high as what we're seeing over here, which I find interesting. We'll see if that ends up verifying or not. I don't know. Like I said, the short wave over here isn't going to be as strong starting out. So I do think that that comes into play. But that being said here, we're going to keep moving here because we're short on time. Hopefully I can even get this video up for you guys. But in any case, this is what our simulated radar could look like. Come on, baby. But it looks like, like I said, right around OOZ is when storms start to fire. We do get a few cells over here towards Kansas, so we will have to watch that region. But question is, will they end up in that area that we were talking that we were just talking about with the significant tornado perimeter if it does we might have something going on there then of course like i said there's that cell that i'm talking about towards western oklahoma that comes into play too so i do have my questions with that like i said there is a area right here where we do have a cap where we did have a little bit of capping so that building cap may either help or hurt these storms that are around west oklahoma of course, Texas, we're mainly expecting a linear threat with damaging winds. So as we get into the overnight, of course, these storms eventually will start to lose their steam here. I think there could be a potential for a nocturnal threat, maybe towards south central Kansas as well. I'll have to see how things play out with that. But got to run here. Appreciate you guys being here. And I will see you later this afternoon. Until then, it's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Take care. Have an awesome rest of your day.